Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. We're in the brewery this morning after the August bank holiday. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a walk around and show you what's been going on the past week or two. But something I thought worthy of note, I placed an order last week from China for some DPDT relays and associated sockets. It was actually almost the same price to order the sockets as well, so I thought why not do both. Actually, I just needed the relays because these are a consumable and the contacts do wear out. And uh, they arrived within a week. I thought that was excellent service and really rather fast. Anyway, I'll flip the camera and we'll have a look what we've been up to over the past month or so, I guess. We have quite a collection of used 5 litre jerry cans, a bit of cardboard, but the biggest thing you'll notice is a pile of junk down here. Still needs to be sorted through some of this because there'll be, well I'm a man so I've got to save cables, haven't I? Uh, so all this needs sorting through. This is my scrap pile. So we have assorted scrap metals here, which I'm just going to get rid of. I've been hoarding these for a couple of years now. And quite frankly, I think I'm just going to get shot of it because I needed to clear some space up. And that includes this old sink, which is buggered really, because it just used to drip on the floor. So I welded this flat bar to it. And welding the flat bar to it caused the material to weld slightly and buckle because I was still a, well, I still am a novice welder. Some more scrap here, got to go. We've taken the partitions down in the pub as well, the coronavirus restrictions partitions. It's still relatively safe in there, but they were looking tired and tatty and they were thrown up quickly, so that's what they are. And then here's the killer. That is mainly, not all, but mainly scrap cable. And uh, yeah, quite a lot of it too. So that's going to go. More stainless steel, mainly cool cooling coils out of the undercounter chillers, which we use for cooling, obviously, our fermenters. No good to me anymore. So I'm just, again, I'm ditching, getting rid, scrapping. Bit of copper pipe there as well. And uh, yeah, we've had a real big clean out. Let me show you what we've done. So through into the workshop, there's more rubbish. So here we have, this scrap's gonna need sorting. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of that. Tabletops, crap, don't want them anymore. So again, I'll be getting rid of those. Either burning them or tipping them and I've done that to clear a little bit of space out here in the back so do you see all those plastic firkins and pins make me an offer come and collect you can take them they'll probably be here for the next week or so so if you'd like any of them please get in touch and get yourself over to Retford and pick them up there's probably about a dozen or so plastic firkins all in various states of repair Good clean up, some of them will be fine. Others you can chop up, use as planters, whatever you like. Uh, but yeah, free to a good home actually. Never mind, make me an offer. If you want them, come and get them. And you'll see that we've got still quite a bit of stuff out there. A good sink, I'm keeping that one. And some scaffolding down the back end. And uh, I actually want to get this, this um, shelf in because it's not going to last a winter out there because that I put a tarpaulin up on this timber work and within a year it turned into powder so don't buy tarpaulins from tool station because they're not UV protected they're just some cheap crappy PVC so I'm going to take you up the stairs sailor into the back room and show you exactly what we've done again 
more stuff for the tip, saving the keg of course, come in handy. Plaster and whatnot's gone off. The old slide on wire canopy, tip bound. And then in here, it looks a lot tidier, doesn't it? I love it a lot tidier. So I'm saving some of the coils. These are brand new. So I'm not throwing them away. There's another container there I must pull out. And then in total, we've got approximately 40, yeah, you heard that right, about 40 boxes of glasses. Glasses like this. All that kind of stuff, which we don't really use very much of. Got some other fancy pants ones up here as well somewhere. See if I can pull one out and show you. I don't know if they're in here or not. There we go. Look at them. So we're just hanging on to these. These are all freebies from uh, beer suppliers and, you know, spirits merchants and all that kind of thing. So we're just going to hang on to them. And when our branded glasses arrive, which won't be too long, hopefully, we'll look in the first, second, maybe third week in September, then we're going to pull all the pint pots out from the bar, swap them for our branded ones and push a lot of this back in. Also got some overflow plateage and whatnot from the kitchen. But yeah, a lot of stuff in here that I kind of was tempted to dump all of it. Um, but to be fair, a lot of it still has a monetary value and it will be used at some point. Insulation, for instance, if I get another tank, that'll be used up. Stuff like this, well, Halloween decorations for the pub, well, Christmas decorations for the pub somewhere else as well. There's a Christmas tree there. You know those kind of things that you're just like, oh, God, if we had an attic, that's where they'd be. And essentially, that's what this room doubles up as. Although it does have an attic space, it's not exactly suitable for going into, so I just store a little bit of this Kingspan-type insulation up there and... Yeah, and then I've told you before, that over there is a full um, 4 meter by 3 meter double hipped roof conservatory, believe it or not, which I'm saving, uh, hopefully, to put on a house, if we ever actually own one. Anyway, enough rambling in the loft space, or the back room, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go and have a look at the state of the beer garden after the bank holiday weekend, and uh, I'll have a look what we've made. So it looks like we're waiting for the gas man to come and change out these CO2 canisters. Um, and it looks like the veg man's been this morning. We've actually trained him now to use this little container. So he has to come through the padlock gate. And then if nobody's here in the morning, he pops his veg in there. So I'll just put these new potatoes away, which I've just pulled out. And here you can see we've got a bit of a dry store going on which I think everyone is already familiar with. Had a big clean out in here as well recently and uh, organised everything, labelled stuff up, made it all look nice and neat so anybody can come in and they know exactly where to find things and where to replace things, of course. Look at that for a collection of Gordon's gins. And that for a collection of random ones. Yeah, loads of gin. Anyway, I'm going to grab this veg and take it upstairs. This is what I like to see when I come in in the morning. All nice and clean. Floor's looking relatively good as well. I'm pretty sure the cleaner was meant to be off this week, but I could be wrong. If she's in, she's done a blinder. And then always nice to see in the kitchen. Everything tidy, present, correct. Only thing out is a bit of bread and some herbs and spices, that's fine. Yeah, look at that. I can't believe how clean it looks considering yesterday they would have had an absolute nutcase of a job. Don't know if I told you about this. Um, the saladette kept icing up and uh, we had to throw quite a lot of stock away at one point because we keep some meat in this corner and it wasn't cold enough. We obviously have 
um, separate thermometers as well. We don't just go off the digital one. We have little analog reads in there as well. And uh, the evaporator had iced up, so the whole thing got warm. And it turns out it's because of this not having a lid on it. So I fabricated a lid and an extra shelf and well it works an absolute treat we've got Wednesday day dots there that's all good stuff I like to see that's what I like to see we've got PAA which we're now using here for surface sanitizer for the stainless steel as well so let's have a walk through well doesn't that look neat I'm really rather pleased I expected to walk into a bomb site this morning, but no, nope, it's fine. I did notice that the pump clips were getting a little bit tired and tatty. So I think it's about time I reprinted these so that when our customers come in to the bar, which they do now, they can actually have a look what beer we've got. And here's a collection of some notes that people have donated to the cause. Look at that. 500 something there Kenyan whatever's a thousand Iraqi dinars five Egyptian pounds 500 Vietnamese something or others uh, Romanian Li 10 Li 20 I don't know what that is it's interesting anyway isn't it and of course our little triceratops there. Right, I'm gonna go next door and actually do some freaking work. Passive aggressive me. <laughs> so I've done a few things today. I had to change out these, which is one of the reasons why I ordered them. Because, uh, well, at first I thought that that had gone, one of those relays had burnt out. Well then I came down to the glycol res, the classic 1000 and well in here we've built up an ice bank, you see the ice there? So that means that the machine thinks it's at temperature so it's going to turn on because the thermoprobe is encapsulated in ice. So uh, it can't go much higher or lower. You know, it's insulated. Ice is an insulator. So this would have just been pumping and pumping and creating more and more ice. And of course, that then is preventing the liquid from getting cold, which means the liquid going through the pipework wasn't getting colder. In fact, it was getting warmer because it was taking the heat out of the cold room and it's like a negative feedback loop it makes this worse so I've turned the machine off the compressors off anyway so the ice will melt overnight but what that indicates to me is this is the one we've been having issues with and I've had to keep topping it up but that indicates to me that the glycol concentration has decreased therefore meaning we have a higher uh, water concentration in there meaning it can freeze so that's something we're gonna have to look at in a few weeks coming but it should be all right during winter actually not a big deal I need to make sure that the glycol to the um, external heat dumps the concentration is correct in those because that will cause pipes to freeze and if pipes freeze then uh, pipes burst and this is something I had a little glitch then this is something that I've been doing today as well printing off some more pump clips because the ones on the bar look relatively tired and that's due to UV damage I think on the ink so I'm trying to put a little bit of this Wilco spray lacquer on I'm hoping it will give it a little bit of ultraviolet protection non-yellowing it says so you'd hope that there was some type of UV blocker in there I don't know if there is or not but 
we've got nice even coverage as you can see on there from the glare so hopefully two or three more coats and these should be durable enough to go onto the bar and hopefully last a little bit of time until I'm in a position to get some of these made professionally it's really quite expensive to have them done in ones and twos so we'll be doing it like this for now until we start wholesaling beer then it's worth having them done in the hundreds but I won't be wholesaling until we've got a new bigger kit oh it's all oh, it's like switching over there anymore it's all kind of swings and roundabouts in it and uh, oh, that's the wrong term I think what I'm using there it's uh, the chicken and egg scenario is the term I'm looking for which one comes first anyway I'm gonna call it a day today while there's still some light and I'm also gonna take home some lagers you may remember I did a Kvik lager many moons back well I sent some to our friend and colleague uh, mr. Christopher Millington on the Hop Edition podcast and well he thinks this is a damn fine lager so didn't get any dice to off it out of the ordinary anyway didn't get any banana thought it was spot on so I'm going to take some home to sample tonight and see uh, see what I think on reflection so away we go with these bad boys and uh, while I'm on the subject I was sent this by somebody I can't remember who it was but I don't think I've featured it yet so this is Mannequin Piss great name um, 7% uh, Marisotta Pale Amber Malt Crystal Malt it's a Belgian double anyway folks at 7% percent i want to take this home and try this tonight as well might be a winner um, but I've got a piece of paper somewhere who from the person who sent this out and uh, yeah I do apologize for not making something more recently about this beer uh, but we'll we'll give it a review today I do like the touches that you've put on there and I think there are also some MOSFETs in the package as well which I do appreciate thank you very much I'll probably not get around to using them in a project very soon because well I don't have anything lined up but nonetheless they'll certainly go in the box of tricks for when I want to do something again in the future so thanks thank you very much for this I'm looking forward to it it's first of September tomorrow I've not had a bottled beer for a very long time so this is our Four down, mannequin peas, 7%, Belgian double, Bulldog B16 yeast, Belgian Saison, LG1068, 29.29 IBUs, 17.13 SRM, very, very precise numbers there. Uh, hops, Challenger, Cascade, Challenger, 316 calories per 500ml bottle. It's going to completely ruin my diet. Oh my god. I did think that was actually going to go and foam over then for a second. This is going to require a very steady pour. Already going a little bit pear shaped. We ain't going to get this whole bottle in here. No way. Unless that head dies quickly and it seems to be doing... It's all chilled and what have you. You see the condensation on the bottle? Maybe not. We should get in. It's a 500. It's a pint glass to the brim. It's a 500ml bottle. So we should get it in there. We should get it in. Not sure if we'll. Hello, Reg. Oh god. I'm just gonna let the foam go over. 
dripping through the gaps in the uh, <laughs> the table, so we're getting away with it. Extremely, extremely carbonated. There we go. It looks like a Belgian double. Oh my goodness. 7%. Oh. Not my favourite beer style, by the way, so excuse any funny faces. Oh. Yeah. I can taste the amber malt in there. And the crystal. 23% amber malt. Quite a lot, really. So there she is. Hey, yeah, Reg, who you going to say hello? Make a little appearance. Nobody's seen you for a long time. I feel wretched old. Go get the chickens, Reg. Good boy. Right, well. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, well, here's to a good September. Let's hope it was as good as August. Ah. <sighs> That's actually quite nice. Yeah, 7% Reg. Let's get sloshed. <laughs> now, because I'm such a professional videographer, I thought, why not, whilst catching up on a little bit of Martin's vloggage, as his uh, YouTube channel, and because I've got the bottle opener out for the bottled beer, the double, no less, that I would have a go at Martin's TTL Nepo, which he brought me some time ago. But I can guarantee it has been stored below 4 degrees ever since. I'm not going to be able to get this out one handed, am I? Uh, so I thought, since we're doing beer reviews... There we go. I'd finish off the day with this bad boy. And uh, 5.8 Mosaic Simcoe Citra Strata Sander Yeast. It's going to be a freaking winner, I'm sure of it. But yeah, I'm just catching up on Martin's stuff. I came in and I thought, you know, since I'm doing a vlog today, for the first time probably this month, then why not incorporate a couple of things I've been meaning to catch up on. So, here it is. There's also... A sour from the Nut Hatch Brewery in the fridge, which I might get to in the next couple of days, or even today. Let's see how we feel. So I want to spin the camera around so you can see me pour it and drink it. So here I am, crouching down a little bit because I don't have a tripod. Ignore child, number one, upstairs. So I'm guessing, um, mine didn't trust whether this had... Uh, Sealed or not, hence the back bag. I've never really got on with these uh, capable plastic bottles either. Camera malfunction. I'm so nervous about squeezing the bottle and squirting everything out of it while I try to take the cap off. Anyway, see in the background some of Abigail's wonderful artwork from school and uh, the top shelf. Above my right shoulder. Shall we try and entice a little bit of head on this Nieper? There we go. Martin's pride and joy. Look at the colour. That is actually quite nice and orange and relatively representative of what I'm seeing as well. Beautiful. It looks even nicer up there, doesn't it? So let's have a go. I must say that that Belgian double having such a high carbonation 
has done nothing for my digestion whatsoever. So it's going to slow me down on the next few beers, I would imagine. Mm. Oh, new juicy, juicy mother. Mm. That's wonderful. Oh, mate. Well done, Mr. B. Mosaic Simcoe Citra Strata. What a combination that is. That's exquisite, mate. Well, I think that's all I can say about that, considering I'm kind of uh, gassed up from that previous beer. But I'm going to watch some more of Martin's videos and enjoy this. Definitely getting lots of soft citrus on this. Tangerine, orange... Well, almost strikes as if there's Amarillo in there, which we know there isn't. And then there's a little bit of peach and pineapple in the back. And it's a very soft beer as well. Low bitterness. It's really rather gorgeous, folks. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going to watch some YouTube. I suggest you do the same. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Do 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 do